So in, in 96 we won a, um, a, a, an initially an art and regional award for the centenary building um, and then it progressed and won a national award um, and then very much to our surprise um, it got down to the final six um, for, the, for the first ever Sterling Prize and again um, <laughs> uh, I mean it, it's just incredible vivid memory for the um, that inaugural prize uh, at the RIBA headquarters in Portland Place um, in the summer of that year, and I always remember the you know the roar when uh, Mary Sterling, Lady Lady Sterling, uh, announced that um, we'd won the first ever Sterling Prize for the Centenary Building. So we had to design essentially a flexible building that could ultimately take any use that the university um, had in its mind. At the, at the outset it was going to be very much a school of electronics and 16 weeks into the contract um, it became the school of art and design technology. There, was, there is an inherent flexibility within the building so I mean really once the change in use came about um, the, uh, the servicing the nature of, of how the building is serviced could, could actually manage that. It did actually mean that we had to um, take out two lecture theatres and convert them into technology suites. Um, but really other than that, um, it was uh, quite painless. And it came at a time when, um, you know, because we were emerging from, um, um, from recession, uh, we still, I think that there were still only six or seven people in the practice. I think the architectural profession was sort of recovering from um, uh, from that period and the sort of criticism that it had in the press, the uh, famous Prince Charles speech on the carbuncle of the Muchler friend. And, uh, and we felt that art and design deserved an architect who might be able to translate the philosophy of the faculty into a real structure. And so we chose Stephen and we have had no regrets on that score. I think it's a very rich time um, um, for the profession. Um, certainly the buildings that I assessed in the London region uh, were, uh, were very much a, 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 mix, a mixture of styles. Uh, and, um, but one of the things the thing that, that encouraged me, uh, which is obviously um, something that I'm particularly passionate about, is that there do appear to be um, a number of small young practices uh, who are really actually coming to the fore and producing very good buildings for well-established clients and I find that really quite encouraging. When, when a, a, a young practice is trying to establish itself, uh, one is always looking for credibility and, and, and certainly um, this award and, and previous awards uh, have been very reassuring um, that the profession is saying, well yes, what you're doing is okay, which is always very encouraging. But also when one is presenting an approach to a client, it really does um, add something to your presentation. It was just an ex ex extraordinary um, experience and, and the, as you can imagine the press that unfolded from that, the National Press, um, you know, following so closely on the back of the, of the Royal Fine Art Commission Award. Um, it, it, uh, it almost came too soon in the practice because suddenly we were catapulted forward and, and competing for you know, major projects um, um, alongside um, practices who have had a huge admiration for and I'm not too sure that both in terms of our experience or the size of practice were we ready for some of the projects that we were um, um, you know that we were uh, you know, so I don't think we were necessarily ready for the projects of the world so we're now sort of being, you know, now competing for. Um, but it, it came at an interesting time because, you know, um, I, I think the sort of pr the pr fortunes of the practice have fluctuated, you know, with the economic cycles and um, financially we needed that £20,000, <laughs> quite apart from, uh, you know, the sort of publicity that ensued from that.